Well, good morning, guys. So I got to ask a question, man. It's so we. I love Christmas, y'all know that, and it's so much fun. We have so much fun with y'all, and and uh, we'll have more gifts on. But I want to encourage you to come Friday, and we wanted, um, like I said before, my mic was off and never, or on and everything. I wanted to uh, not put people in a bind on the 24th and 25th, right? So, you know, the Lord will forgive us, right? <laughs> we can do the 22nd together, and it'd be just the same. So. Let's do Friday. We're going to have some nice events, and uh, it's going to be fun. We're going to have uh, refreshments. Uh, we have refreshments after today, and everybody enjoying getting their gifts? Everybody enjoy just a good church, man? It's just fun having a good church, man. Like, that worship, is that was on time right there, man. And so let me ask you a question. Who looks at Holy Night, the song, different now? Wasn't that powerful now? See, if you look at it as a worship song, it's like, what? That's why the Holy Ghost stopped me when I was going hunting that day and said, I want you to listen to this song, and I want you to write the Christmas series about it. So guess what? Week two. Week two. Now, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like an historical buff, right? So I went to the old original French lyrics. Did you know Holy Night was not even written by a Christian? No. It was a commemorative uh, for some kind of clock or uh, something in a new church. And the guy could write very well, so they said, hey, would you write us something? He ended up writing that poem, and he wasn't even a Christian. And so what amazes me about songs like that, especially Holy Night, is unsaved and unchurched people are singing that and know that song. That's why the Christmas season is so important. And that's why we push evangelism during the Christmas season. Because it's right, it's all about Jesus, right? So week two, are y'all ready? Let me, uh, let me pray over this. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for these wonderful people. We thank you for this, uh, the holidays, Lord. We thank you for, uh, Father, we thank you for sending Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you sent Emmanuel. That means God is with us, Lord. And we thank you, Jesus, that you said you'll never leave nor forsake us. We uh, pray that the word of God penetrates hearts today, Father, that deep down deep and produces change by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit, for your presence. And everybody said, amen. amen. Week two, the thrill of hope. So uh, y'all all enjoyed week one. You said, I'm glad. I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed studying it. Because when you share something, you always need to prove it in the Word. Right? Don't go to a church that can't prove it in the Word. Because the Word of God is the truth. The Bible says the Word of God never fades. And, and so it, it, it's, it's, it, Jesus said, I am the word, right? And so if you don't like the word, then you've got a problem following Jesus. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm serious. I mean, so stick to the word. And I like to dig sometimes and do a little study because we get a little meat from it. And we start understanding the Bible that it's all about Jesus. From, from the beginning to the end, it's all about Jesus. The end when it says amen and in the front, Jesus was there at the beginning of the creation too. And it's so amazing. It says the light entered the world. Come on now. See, I, I ain't even going to preach that today, but that's a whole nother. I might preach that next week. The whole goal is to understand this powerful event, and we have to look at it scripturally. And because, oh, what a night. It was not just a holy night. Oh, what a night. So we are breaking down the Christmas carol. And, and like I said, man, unsaved and unchurched people, they even know that song. See, that was the only song y'all know. Y'all been, we've been trying to play back some of them songs. that Y'all were like, ooh, I've got a song I can sing this morning. But I ain't hating. I'm kind of like that, too, because if y'all look at me, I look with one eye sometimes. Y'all, I, I, I act like I'm closing this eye, and I'm reading the screen with my left. I'm like, <laughs> like oh, thank you, Jesus. You know. <laughs> See, I confess my sins, too, bro. See, the Christmas carol is... Oh, holy night. And I love the way that the lyrics tell the story of Jesus' birth. The first stanza points out a beautiful picture of the world waiting, longing until our Savior was born, and our soul felt its worth. You feel worthy when you hear how much Jesus loves you. You feel worthy, bro, when he knows that he went to the cross for you. No matter what you've done, Jesus said, I've done it for you already on the cross. I spilt my blood for you, and so it's not about you no more. I'm the center of it all. I'm going to change your life, and I'm going to give you a future and a hope. That was a word of God for you, bro. The thrill of hope. 
Y'all like my cute shirt? Thanks, man. A, wor- a weary world rejoices. Who's ever been weary in life? I, boy, I'm telling you, when I was in looking at the bottom of that orange, uh, 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 that orange cylinder with a white top that had uh, God knows whose name on that thing because I was buying them off the street. Let me explain something to you. I was weary. I was weary when I was yanking out the IVs and taking my own self out of Breckenridge Hospital. I was weary when I was out there with that 380 to my head and that, that, that I had one in the chamber. I was weary when I cut my wrist. I was weary. And Jesus said, I love you. That's not me. He says, no, of course it isn't. I'm telling you, I love you. When you think nobody loves you no more, I'm still here for you, bro. The pistol went, the phone went, and guess what? You got a pastor that has a little cute shirt. I got off, I got off Etsy or something. I don't even know where I got it from. A thrill of hope. That's the hope that Jesus gives you. He gives you a future and a hope. That's why this is so powerful of a season. He is the reason for the season. He said, God said, I got to make a way to reconcile my child and and my daughter and my son back to me. And there's only one way to do it. I've got to give my only begotten son. Wow. What a gift. The thrill of hope. Hope gives us purpose, and it gives us a future. And I'm going to recap a little. Hope sets us free. It heals you. It joins us in his love. And the Bible is all about hope because hope is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christo. Salva y sana. That means he saved and he healed my life. He changed me. And he's changing each one of you. I've got people that are beautiful, I've prayed for for two years, and to see Jesus capture their heart and get them where he wants them to be, I am so amazed by that. That is called the thrill of hope. And we dove into a lot of scripture, now this event fulfilled the prophecies throughout the Bible. You word uh, that like to get in the word, how'd you enjoy that? That was pretty cool last week. But this is our main scripture, Isaiah 9, 6. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us. See how it says to us? Why? Each one of us. And the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, and the Prince of Peace. That's why the angels, when he was born, they were singing hallelujah, peace to men, all goodwill. Because they knew that the peace that hit your heart had come. That that needle couldn't do. That them pills couldn't do. That popping that bottle couldn't do. That that, that, that addictions that you had. That they could not fill that void. They knew that peace had come and they proclaimed it on the earth. We dove into a lot of scripture, man. But that is the one. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. See, as this bright star shined for the world to see, it shined on into the morning. I love that. It declared its creator. It declared the king has come. It declared the light of the world would shatter sin and darkness. It fulfilled the prophecies that the bright morning star was here upon the earth. And Jesus said it in Revelation, I have come because I am the bright morning star and I am the light and the darkness cannot comprehend it. Isaiah 9, 2, the people walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. I pray that the light shines on you when you hear the word of God today, that your heart is set aglow. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. What a lyric. Our Redeemer was born and the Father gave it all for you and I. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You know what sin and error pining Pining means you were anguish. You were, le- you were yearning for something to fill that void in your life. You were pining. You were waiting for that. Well, today's your day. If you have not accepted Christ today, he'll fill the void. <laughs> Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, that's the thrill of hope. 
My Redeemer has come. And my Redeemer lives. That thrill of hope, sin had us deformed and conformed to the world. But when heaven touched earth, y'all listen to me, I'm fixed. When heaven touched earth and the Savior was born and gave his life because his love for you was that great, we are transformed by the power of Jesus Christ. All you got to do is believe and then you are accepted into his kingdom and then you are more than a conqueror. That sin has no bound on you. That past must go. You are a new creation in Christ. The thrill of hope is the, in the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. A, worry, a weary world rejoices. Boy, there ain't no greater truth than that. It's hard to live life when you ain't got no hope. It's hard to live life when you have no future ahead of you. When sin has you bound, that you, won't, you do not have that. You think you're all right until that season catches up with you. But thank you, Jesus, for a fresh new day. Because His mercies are fresh every morning is what the Word of God tells me. For mercies are fresh every morning. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me, all you who are weary and laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see... That is the Christmas story right there. That the light came and it broke the yoke of sin. That's all. His presence broke the yoke of sin. And then when he got on the cross, he took all your sins. And then he said, now I'm going to die. They, he died. So don't get that twisted. And then they put him in the tomb and he goes, oh no. Now I'm going to raise up on the third day because now I have to make a way to the Father. He says, there's no other way to heaven but by through me. And he proved that when he stepped out of that grave. You see, it was dark the night he was born. It was dark when he was in that tomb too. But let me explain something to you. Both of those situations were the most epic thing this universe has ever seen because the light hit the darkness. Boy, if this ain't a Christmas message, y'all, yeah, hey, y'all, y'all need to go on and go to sleep. I'll put some, I'll put a couple of them together for y'all, man. <laughs> it brings us to our first course in the song, "Oh Holy Night." Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angels' voices, oh, night divine, oh, night when Christ was born, oh, night, oh, holy night, oh, night divine. Luke two thirteen, and suddenly there appeared with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Wow. The thrill of hope is the love that heals us when we are hurting. The thrill of hope is that God is with you. We are not alone. The thrill of hope, like I said for the third time, is purely Jesus Christ. In the face of darkness and pain in life, we have a very real hope of the coming of our Savior too. He came the first time. He's coming back again. Matthew one twenty three. Behold, the virgin shall be with a child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translate, uh, translated means God with us. He sent that baby boy to us, like I read earlier, and then he says, now God is with us. He is right next to you. All you got to do is call out to him. He says all you got to do is knock, and I'll answer. That's it. Let's look at the next part of this song. Point number one, light of faith. Led by the light of faith, uh, that's a hard word. Serenity beaming with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand. So true faith in Jesus truly changes lives, and it's a beautiful thing to see. The light of faith... Uh, uh, beaming is a poetic way to describe how we remember his birth, right? That's what, it, that's, what the, that's what the song means. But see, Jesus is no longer a baby. Oh, dear baby Jesus. No, nah, bro. Ricky Bobby, you got it twisted. Let me explain something to you. He is no longer a baby, and he ain't in the cradle no more. He's seated at the right hand of God in majesty. So you better be praying to the real Jesus. Praying for Ricky Bobby's soul, bro. He 
it ain't right anyway. He's like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Y'all remember that on the interview? He's like, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> Goofiest show I've ever seen in my life. Because let me explain something to you. He's at the right hand of God in majesty. Hebrews 1.3, and he is the radiance of his glory and the exact rep uh, representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power. And when he had made purification sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Let me explain something to you. All things are held together by the word of Jesus' power. That resurrection power. And the crazy thing is, if you've accepted Jesus, that power is within you. It's the Holy Spirit, Christ's presence within you. So you can't tell me you cannot be a conqueror. You're just choosing the wrong thing. But that's all right, we're preaching still. The light of faith is the glory of his radiance. All things are upheld by the word of his power. He is holy. He is pure. He is sinless. And that's why he is the most ultimate light. And let me explain something to you. That's why darkness didn't comprehend or understand it. That's why the world cannot understand it. Because they're not, they're, they haven't not truly accepted that light into their heart. They're still thinking with a worldly mindset. They're still thinking with how they were born. But Jesus said you must be born again. It's not, you can't come out of your mama's womb twice. He said you must be born by the Spirit, by faith. You see, holy means set apart. And there is certainly no other like night like this holy night. And it was a one-time event. You know, the entire word, uh, world felt this event. Do you know that? It's quite clear in the scriptures. When you have multitudes of heavenly hosts showing up on earth, when you got lowly shepherds out there, when you have wise men hitting the road as quick as they can to get there, and kings are looking for this situation, let me explain something to you. It's just like when Jesus died on the cross and the earth shook. The veil was ripped. It turned dark. And can you imagine these events? Think about that. Powerful. Boy, y'all are like, oh, I'm going to look at the Christmas story a little bit different. That's such a cute nativity scene you have on your fireplace, Pastor Charlie. It is, but you don't know the power behind that. You learn in the day, though. Jesus was born at night, too. So I'm going along with the old holy night. Luke 2, 7. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Who's going to make room for Jesus today? Oh, I don't, I, I, don't, I, I don't need that Jesus stuff. That's just a crutch, bro. Well, nothing else helped me. And that gun sure almost went off. You better make room for him in your heart. You don't know how many days you have left. Let me explain something to you. Eternity is real fast. I'm preaching, I know. It's a little bit hard for Christmas. I'll be all right, though. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock at night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. Like I always said, I bet they were. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, come on somebody, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. The gospel is the good news. That's what it means. And so let's go to our next lyric. With glowing hearts by his cradle we stand. You see, when you truly receive Christ in your heart, you get lit up. Yeah. Not lit up like, not turned up and lit up like I used to be. You get lit up in a whole different way. It's different. Yeah, just like Moses. That's good. That's a good way to put it. And it gets, you get changed, man. And he produces new hearts with, in turn, new creations. Let me show you something in Proverbs 4.18. The ways of right living people glow with the light. Hmm. Wow, you ain't seen that one, have you? The longer they live, the brighter they shine. But the road of the wrongdoing gets darker and darker. Travelers can't see a thing. They fall flat on their faces. Wow. Ezekiel 36.26. 
Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues. Isn't that cool? I had that on my refrigerator. He says, I'll take that old stone heart out of you and I'll put a heart of flesh and I'm going to soften your heart. But, but the gospel is the thing that lights it up. And you, when you believe, then all of a sudden there's change. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things are gone. Behold, new things have come. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, that ought to be it right there. Wow. When we come to Jesus, our hearts change. Our lives change. Our actions change. Our futures and desires should change. Because our hearts are glowing with a love that we've never had before and with a fresh new power of the Holy Spirit. That's a glowing heart. Can somebody say amen? Y'all getting this? All right. We're going to go to, to point two. Wise men seek Jesus. Do y'all remember my series last year? This is, this is what it was. So uh, I got to recap a little because it, it, it pertained to Holy Night. And that leads us to the next part of this song. So led by the light of the stars, so sweetly gleaming, here come the wise men from Orient land. Isn't that cool? And the wise men did in fact journey from the east. And they did follow a star. And they did come from afar. And Matthew 2, 9, After hearing the king, they went their way, and the star which they had seen in the east went on before them until it came and stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Are we seeing a pattern in these scriptures? Why is there a, a three-letter word that's a pattern in here? Joy. Joy, joy, joy. If you're not serving Christ with joy, then you ain't serving him right. <laughs> Verse number 11, after coming to the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. And they fell to the ground and worshipped him. And then opening their treasures, they presented him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. He was blessed. Oh, they might have denied him at the end, but the rich man showed up and said, here you go. Because guess what? He, he wasn't worried about it. He said, I came all the way to the heaven and earth. But see, after that, God wanted to make sure that he supplies all the needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. So just because you were born in a manger, God's still going to provide. Come on, somebody, that was good preaching. And the wise men are magi. Here we go. Y'all want some history? Were scholars of high position. They were highly educated for the time. Advising the rulers of civilizations, they were the kings of the, the, those areas. They were the right-hand men of kings. When a scholar and a magi came into a city, they rolled out the red carpet. They gave them tunics that were laid with 22 karat gold. They gave them jewels. They gave them uh, uh, frankincense and myrrh. They blessed them with everything. They fed them the most best food they had in their town. Can you believe that? I'm giving you a little historic background now. <coughs> that blows my mind. You see, their study of the stars conceived them that a child would be born the king of the Jews. That blows my mind. How did they know that? And I've always wondered, uh, why did he choose the Magi and give them a natural sign? Why? How really did he get their attention to excite and draw the curiosity of these secular leaders, the astronomers, and they were in a pagan, sinless culture at the time? I want you to think about that. A pagan, sinless culture at the time. These were astronomers. Are y'all with me? These were mysterious men. Not religious at all like you think religious. No church ties. Actually on the other end of the spectrum, dealing in witchcraft and spiritual matters centered on earthly and at times evil things. That's crazy. Again, why choose them? Well, because God uses people and whatever it takes to get hearts and intentions to fulfill his plans. Obviously, as we learn later, that the church of the time would reject Christ and actually be the force to crucify him and not only to deny him, but to condemn him to death. So it didn't matter if you were religious or not. The religious leaders at the time, they overlooked Christ anyway. So why not pick some old pagan astronomers out there? 
At least they knew it was a real change. At least they saw something in the earth, and they were paying attention at least. This is pretty good. Think about that for a second. The one who were supposed to be in the light were blind. The ones in the darkness had seen. Come on, somebody. We talked about that this morning, bro. And let me say, funny how I always preach the kingdom of God is flipped. God flips the script all the time. Can somebody say amen? Because maybe this, Isaiah 44, 25, causing the omens of boasters to fail, making fools of the diviners, causing wise men to draw back and turning their knowledge into foolishness, confirming the word of his servant and performing the purpose of his messengers. That was prophesied. Wow, he flipped the script. Isn't that cool? God always shows up and shows out when he desires. God made sure they knew how to find what they were seeking too. And you always, he always does, uh, when one's heart seeks for the truth, you cannot turn back God's purposes. You can't. And I think the Magi saw something that they never saw before. They saw a bright light. And even though they didn't fully understand it, I think this light to them was simply this, hope for change. Come on, somebody say amen. Something new and powerful had come to the earth. You see, because wise men follow the light. Y'all catch that? John 1, 9, there was a true light which coming into the world enlightens every man. Man. And truth hits the heart. When people hear the true gospel of Jesus Christ and the truth in the word of God, it makes your heart glow. It enlightens your heart. It's up to you then to choose it. But you must make a choice. In Ephesians 5, 15, and 16, but be very careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. I preached a three-week sermon, a three-week series this year on this. Make sure you are living wisely for you and your family. I guess to follow or reject the light, the wise men follow the light. Isn't that so cool? And he uses whoever he wants to make those plans succeed. That's why you cannot come tell me that you are not worthy. That's why you cannot come tell me and say, Pastor, that's not for me. Oh, yes, it is. I promise you. Jesus has plans for you. He made you for a specific reason. You were born and created for his work because you are his masterpiece. Point number three, the king has come. Okay, the next part of the song. The king of kings laid us in a lowly manger in all our trials, born to be our friend. Come on, somebody. Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And I'll show you, Revelations 19, 15. From his mouth comes a sharp sword so that with him may strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron, and he treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God the Almighty, and on his robe and on his thigh has the name written, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That baby rose up out of that manger, didn't he? Now let's look at another Old Testament prophecy in Daniel 7, 30, uh, 13. I kept looking in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like the Son of Man was coming. And he came up the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion, glory, and a kingdom to all the peoples, nations, and men of every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which will not pass away, and his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. He's coming back, and the kingdom of heaven will reign. You see, the gospel always amazes, amazes me. A lot of it is flipped. Let me explain. It's flipped of how the world sees it. it it's, it's quite amazing. You see, the servant is the greatest. Faith over fear. Y'all with me? Humility over pride. Rut row. Give and you shall receive. Jesus even said the world will hate you because they hated me first. You see, but to my point, God chooses the foolish things of this world, the base things. 
I love that. I love that. Luke 2, 8, check it out. In the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. He chose lowly shepherds to witness the most amazing event, and he did it at night too. Just like when Nicodemus came to him. Came at night. Because guess what? It don't matter if it's night or day. That power's still going to come out. But what humility, lowly shepherds, to witness this amazing event, and he did it at night too. But why not? He would fulfill the prophecies of the word of God. Y'all ready for this? Isaiah 40, 11. Why, who, would, who would not understand more than lowly shepherds? You ready? Isaiah 40, 11. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead them that are young or with young. Psalms 103. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Psalm 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down by green waters. Right? He leads me, uh, I'm sorry, he makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me to the path of righteousness for his name. Say, and then he said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because he is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. Amen. He has set a place in my enemies' tables. See, the shepherd keeps going. He has anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Amen. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, God, for that. But look, back to our song lyric, the king of kings lay thus in a lowly manger. You see, God chooses the ones that the world would not choose. See, I like a church that the world says, oh, no, they ain't, they, write them off. See, y'all laughing because y'all know that some of y'all are true. Write them off. No, they're not allowed in this church. Well, guess what? Them doors are always open. I take care of one of them. Because Jesus did too. And for the other ones, they need to tell them, if you haven't sinned, then you need to first throw the first stone, brother. Or you need to hit the door. And don't let the door hit you. Well, well the good Lord... 1 Corinthians one twenty seven. I'm glad that you come to this church because I love each and every one of you. And and don't ever think that I don't. That I think that you're perfect. I know you got problems. I look at Jesus in you. See, that's the thing you have to start doing. You have to start looking at people in that way. And as a pastor, I have to look at people that way. But that's just what He showed me to do. You look at your wife that way. You look at your husband that way. You'll have a whole new concept. That was just a little gold nugget. Is that good? All right, I'm rolling. God chooses the ones this world would not choose. 1 Corinthians 1, But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God has chosen the weak things of this world to shame the things which are strong. The base things of this world, that means the bottom things of this world, and the despised God has chosen. The things that are not, so that he may nullify the things that are, so that no man may, may boast before God. I love that. And it shows in the Timothy story. The shepherds were out there. He was like, what greater thing? I'm the great shepherd. That's so cool, man. But that's how Jesus rolled. He rolled with humility, right? See, humility has always been the key. Jesus showed this in his life here on earth and in his birth. There was no room for him at the end, so a stable would be the place that the king of kings would be born. That amazes me still. Lastly, the end of this song stanza, in all our trials, born to be our friend. This is going to get really good right here. Are y'all ready for this? Who's ready to get encouraged right now? John 15, 15. No longer do I call you servants. 
For the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Do you think Jesus is your friend? I promise you. Back to the old. So James 2, 23. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. You know why? He was called a friend of God. I think Jesus is the best friend you can ever have. I come to him daily. Quit being so religious about it. Seriously, man. Just come to him and talk to him. Say, man, Jesus, I need to talk to you today for real. Like, I'm tripping. I'm going to start slapping somebody. And I, I need your peace in my heart right now. I need some self. I need some fruit of the spirit in my life. I need some self-control because I just really cannot be stepping on people's foot and slapping them today. <laughs> and usually the Holy Ghost, you know, talk to you and, 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 uh, and you, you know, calm down. But, man, you can't be religious about it, man. My wife's tripping, man. <laughs> well, by the end of it, when I'm done talking to Jesus, it's, it's flipped around. He's like, no, nah, you the one tripping, bro. I repent, I'm sorry. That's why I tell Ojo, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But, you know, if you just build a relationship like that and you're just honest with Jesus, man, he can move in your life and he can speak to you. It ain't, it ain't, you're thinking too deep about it. You see, Jesus was no stranger to trials, man. He's your friend, he knows what's up, and it started the night he was born. He also understands trials will come in your lives too, but it's okay. He says he will never leave nor forsake you. Matthew 1, 23. Behold, the virgin shall be with the child and shall bear a son. Here we go. Call his name Emmanuel, which translation, translated means God with us. He is right there with you. You got to talk to him like that. See, he is always with he is with you always, John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world that you will have tribulation, pay attention, but take courage, I have overcome the world. You're going to have to go against some things. There's going to be a little tribulation and trials in your life. Trust me. But he says, hey, quit sweating it. I've already overcome the world. And I've given you peace in your heart, and now you have my joy. All you got to do is roll in it. And I think this is why the multitude of angels is saying at Christ's birth announcement. And on earth, peace among men with whom he is pleased. Or we get the phrase, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Peace. He's the Prince of Peace. The Mighty Counselor. The Eternal Father. Jesus said, I've come to bring you peace and I will fill you with joy. Why don't you quit sweating stuff and just put your faith in me? I'm closing. I'm going to let y'all make it today because them big old sugar cookies are about that big. I'm going to put two in my pocket before I roll on too. I'll eat the lint and everything, bro. Oh, that's lint? I thought that was a sprinkle. My bad. Does it see that? I'm fat. <laughs> we will close with this middle course. He knows our need, and to our weakness, no stranger. Behold your king, before him lowly bend. Behold your king, before him bend. Okay, let's look at that. Not only does Jesus know our needs, right? Because that, 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 that lyric in the song said, He knows our need, to our weakness, no stranger. Not only does Jesus know our needs, but he also met uh, our need as a savior. Now the Father supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I got to trip another day. I'm just going to confess another sin of mine. I was like, man, I was looking at, I was like, man, I got to quit tripping about money because it's Christmas and I like to give, right? And so I was thinking, why did any other year not bother me, right? So something was there, you know? So I had to sit back and say, you know what, Lord? 
I'm just going to sit back and, and I'm going to let you take care of this and I'm not going to sweat it. I'm just giving you a little hint, helps in the holiday season because you get so overwhelmed. Quit getting overwhelmed and trying to make it all big production and everything. Just sit back and enjoy Christmas. I had three, two or three people last week come and hug me and cry and said, I lost what's, uh, the sight of what Christmas is about until I heard that message on Sunday. I said, man, thank you, Jesus. I said, you just need to chill. Just enjoy Christmas. Don't get caught up. And I ain't even going to look at that bank account, man, because my God will supply all my needs. And if you get some socks and underwear from the dollar store for Christmas, will you be blessed? <laughs> but I didn't get you the pan that says as seen on TV because they're at the dollar store too. <laughs> Christina's like, can you please not buy me pans that as seen on TV from the dollar store anymore? They last like two cookies. <laughs> and then you're like, Like the stuff comes off of them. Ugh. Philippians 4.19, And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And the writer of Hebrews emphasizes that Jesus is our great high priest, one who was tempted as we are and can sympathize with your weakness. That's what the Bible tells me, Hebrews 4.15. And we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence. Here you go, right here, to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That's a beautiful scripture. See, when Jesus died, the veil torn, now we can go straight to the Father. We don't have to have the weird priests with beards and the blood all over them and the scriptures up here and all that. We ain't got to do all that. If you want to be under the law, then you go roll like that. I'm going to be in the age of grace where Jesus said, I didn't come, I came to give you grace. That's not grace to sin. Don't get it twisted. Because he said, I make you, I'm an, I'll make you an overcomer. I made you a new creation. So don't get it twisted. But understand, there is high grace and wonderful mercy with Jesus Christ. Therefore, the last part we will discuss today, O holy night, behold your king, before him lowly bend. You see, humanity apart from Christ and in sin languishes in error. We are in need of the gospel. It is the truth that sets you free. In John 8, 32, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. I'm almost done. And because you have been set free by the power of Jesus Christ, the lyrics state, Behold your king, before him lowly bend. What does that mean, Pastor? Which is simply to worship him. You bow down. Fall on your knees and behold the king. Before him lowly bend. You see the wise men, the angels, the shepherds bow down and worshiped him when they saw him. Psalms 92 or 29.2, ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Come on, somebody. Worship the Lord in holy array. And when we worship Jesus, we are acknowledging that he is worthy of our praise, that he is worried of our honor, and that he is worried of our glory. And that's what hallelujah does. And so as you learn to praise God at this church, because it's actually pretty powerful, it's been very powerful about the past six months. There's been a big-time presence of the Lord upon this worship in this house. People getting set free just in the worship. That's powerful. That's the kind of anointing you want in a, in a church house. But you have to learn to worship more. Because as Jesus does more in your life, then more of that worship will come out of you. And it's okay. It's okay to raise your hands. I dance and stuff. I look like one of them little deals when you were a kid. I'm up there dancing like this, you know. It, like when you punch it and it falls down and it comes back up. What were those things called? But you know what I'm saying. Like a little roly-poly with my little stomach. I'm just up there like, Jesus. Look like, and I, I get caught up in the Holy Ghost too, so I'm like, yeah, I know. Eric told me, man, you look like one of them things when you used to punch it and you used to go down. Yeah. I guess so, bro, with a little head and a big gut. 
What's in this thing? Isaiah 6, 3. And one called out to another and said, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The whole earth is full of his glory. Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Everything is stuck together by the word of his power. And he is sitting on majesty at the right hand of the Father. He's still interceding for you. And he says, I'm coming back for you. So don't sweat nothing because I'm the one that put peace in your heart. And now you have joy. The Lord is holy. And our correct response to his majesty is to bow down before him. Isaiah describes the worthiness of God as a vision of the cherubim who continually worship God just as they did at the time of his birth. That is amazing. Worship is an essential aspect of Christian life. And if we know the Lord, then we cannot help but praise and acknowledge his glory. We know that we are unworthy to stand before the majesty and, and the holiness of God. But Jesus said, it's all right. Worship me because I made a way for you. Because Jesus Christ died in our place and was raised to life. He enables us to approach the Father with confidence. Despite our unworthiness and our past and the sins, he said, you come to me and you approach the throne of grace. And he said, you worship the Lord and I, you, you can just start worshiping the Lord just for the birth of the Savior when you look at that nativity scene. You'll look at it never again. I hope you look at that nativity scene different and say, man, thank you, Jesus, for that. Because I was going to hell with gas drawers on. The whole reason for Christmas, the whole reason for Christmas, the nativity and the hope it gave, gives us this, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That's the thrill of hope. Redeemed, saved, loved, forgiven, and reconciled back to the Father. Oh, holy night, now hearts are brightly shining. Do you like that? Not just the star, but your hearts are brightly shining this morning. Now you know what the Christmas story is all about. And I hope that, honestly, you never look at it again the same, knowing that that was, probably, that was, the, that was one of the two most powerful events. And I know that that... that 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 song will mean something to you for the rest of your life because you'll look at it in a whole new way now. And I hope that y'all enjoy that. Thank you, Jesus. You see, Jesus was born in order to pay the price for things that we have done wrong, sin. God sent his only son to be our atonement for all of our sins. And he said, I don't want you separated from the Father. I'm giving you a way back. Matthew one twenty one. Here we go. She will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus and he will save his people from their sins. You see, without Jesus, you'd die in your sins. Uh, it says you were dead in your trespasses. And while being fully God and yet fully man, Jesus came in this world as an infant to save us all. And he did it upon the cross. Acts 16, 31, they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Nothing more important right now today than accepting Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior. This is where it all starts. He came all the way from heaven just for you. His love has always been there. I ask you to take a hold of it this morning. Start fresh today. He will fill you with that new hope and that power. If you haven't accepted in your heart, today is your day to experience that new life in Him. A fresh start. He'll fill that missing void that stuff that you've been pining and, 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 and longing for, he's the void filler. He created you because he loves you and your life has a beautiful purpose. I'm telling you that. Everybody please bow their heads. If you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you would like to, please raise your hand this morning. It is just us. I want you to make sure. Don't leave this place without knowing there's two. Thank you, Jesus. Keep your head bowed. There's three. Lord Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. This is your day to truly accept Christ. And I'm so excited. 
that you had the courage to raise your hand, that you had the courage, and I want you to say uh, in your hearts before we pray this prayer, Jesus, really come change me. Really come change me. And so let's all say this prayer together, and those that are here that raise their hand, and those that are online, y'all repeat after me, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner, and I'm in need of you. I know that you died on the cross for me, and you rose on the third day for me. I ask you that to come into my heart and change me. Let me experience your grace and mercy today to forgive me of my sins. Wash and cleanse me with your precious blood. Make me new. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for loving me and giving me new hope in you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Give the Lord a hand. I'm, I'm done. I, I, this, I talked to this brother before, and I, I feel that I do want to lay hands on you. Is that cool if we do that? Uh, you can